so welcome everybody. Thanks for having me here as a speaker. Um, I'm really proud to present this great topic to all of you because um, to, to meet you all in person again, it's, it's like crazy. <laughs> so um, you're definitely in the right place today because uh, this is a topic which comes from the bottom of my heart because accessibility is important for everyone not only if you are disabled or old or whatever, it's a topic for all of us. So, um, I have one guy um, which gave me some pictures. So, if you, if you think about accessibility, you will always think about that there are blind people. And um, this will be a great part of this presentation, but there are also disabled people who are missing arms or whatever. Um, and we want to make them uh, forms as easy as possible. Um, this is a, a video. Um, name start. My, web, my website document. Our name screen name screen dialogue. Name star edit required blank. Crazy. Dialogue. Project description. Dialogue. Edit multi line blank. Name star edit required Project blank. description. <laughs> Stop. Has filling out a supposedly simple formula pushed you to your limits before? Now imagine what it must be like for people with disabilities. A barrier-free and accessible web provides the opportunity to participate more actively in society. For everybody. Um, a short introduction to myself. My name is um, Dirk Schäffer. I'm working as a psycho senior solution architect at uh, Kamao Tech. Since two years in a row, I'm a, a technology MVP. And um, sadly, I lost my co-speaker. You see, I'm alone here because in Germany they are striking and uh, they canceled our flight and, and we did a road trip over here, nine hours. <laughs> so this would be my co-speaker, but he's not there. Um, I have an agenda for you. It, it looks a lot. It is a lot, but I will, <laughs> will try to get uh, fast uh, through it. First of all, the, the international standards. Um, there are standards. The international one is uh, from W3O. And uh, in our case, um, in Germany, that every public institution um, have to be accessibility ready, so it's a must. And we have a special German page um, which covers this, and they uh, described how you have to test the forms and what should be the result. Um, yeah, there are four main principles. Um, I will, I will cover them uh, in the next slides. Um, for, for you guys, um, I always have links on the bottom left where everything is described. So this is no magic or something new what I'm doing here. Um, there will always be links. The principles are perceivable, operatable, understandable and robust. And perceivable, as you can see, the user must get the information in any way, by hearing, seeing, or even feeling. And um, you, know, you may uh, wonder how it works. How can I feel a, a website? I will show you that later. <laughs> um, it must be operable, operable because with any device you have, uh, you, you have to, to navigate through your web page or whatever. Um, it must be understandable. Um, it, it doesn't matter if the screen reader set field is required. I don't know which field, so um, we have it later in the, in the uh, validation section. And for sure, it must be robust um, with any device, with any content uh, should be accessible. 
So, what's the intention? Why, why is accessibility so important? This is the, the leader of um, W3C, and the nice part in the internet, it, it should be universal. And um, access should be done by everyone, regardless of, of, of if he is disabled or whatever. Yeah, this is my, my favorite <laughs> description because everyone benefits from accessibility. So the best example is if you have an elevator. So everyone would use this elevator or if you, if you have parents with uh, strollers or old people, everyone will use the elevator. So accessibility is for everyone. Um, yeah, and this is the most uh, important uh, quote because uh, we all should um, do that or integrate that in our daily business. It's not about psycho, it's not about whatever. Whatever your language you, you write, it's, it's really, really important that you have this accessibility stuff in your, in your mind. This is really, really important. This is my friend, uh, Hans Jürgen. Um, I played with him fistball since 30 years. I, I know him since I was 16. Um, he lost his arms uh, uh, after an accident with a tram. Um, and um, this is the only tool he had to do his uh, daily business. And he writes everything. He writes WhatsApp messages, emails. He has uh, the most beautiful handwriting I ever saw. Uh, and he drives car with, with this simple hook. Um, and this is for me on X-Men because he's special. They, they, they have more abilities uh, um, that you expect. And um, every guy I met uh, in this club uh, is not disabled. Even if he has missing hands or whatever. But both guys are not disabled. You will see in the, in the presentation um, in many videos we use an, an, an screen reader. Um, this is called uh, NVDEA. It's a non-visual desktop assistant. Um, the problem in this case is um, I can't do a live demo with it because it, it will talk the whole time, so it's not really good for a presentation. <laughs> um, it's free. Open source, and it, it, it's also able here to 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 read Braille. The most common tools which we will use is uh, Chrome. It has an accessibility tab here as well, so you can check all the, the, the fields. This is important. I talked yesterday to to someone who said um, they are colorblind so they can't have a difference between red and green. And this is also a tool to measure uh, the, the contrast. And for sure, our uh, output, what we generate, should always be a, a valid document. So once again, um, what I'm now showing, um, at this point, uh, thanks a lot uh, to Ramona Mendy. Uh, she's she's uh, from Humanware in Australia, and she gave me that video. So uh, you may have wondered why I said, um, <coughs> uh, how can a blind woman feel the internet? So and there are uh, some. Uh, Tools. This is Hello, I'm touch. Ramona Mandy and I work as a sales consultant for Humanware who make adaptive technology for vision impaired people. Today I'd like to demonstrate our brand new BrailleNote Touch which is the first Google certified Braille tablet. 
So this is the Braille Note Touch. It's Humanware's latest generation of note takers. We've been making Braille Notes for many years, which are productivity devices, allowing people to take notes, uh, schedule appointments, etc. The difference between past versions and this one is that it's a Google certified Braille tablet. So it's a note taker, but it's based on an Android platform, which allows us to use Android apps as well as our own programs. It's a unit that allows me to do braille entry with the braille keys on top, and it has a braille display so I can read the text that I'm producing or reading from other people. By doing a W, I can jump straight to the word processor. Word processor, keyword. And you'll notice it has speech as well. I press enter because I want the word processor. Remote keyword recovery file exists. Keyword do not close last session properly. Do you want to open the recovery file to save it or discard it? It's discard, given me discard, a, a okay. message telling me I forgot to close my other message properly, and there's a discard button. I'll just do D discard button. and enter. Keyword menu. Now I'm going to do C for create. Create. Enter. Loading. Please wait three periods. And it box. allows me now to write, That's this one. is a test document. Not very original. And I can read that in Braille. I can play it back with speech. This is a test document. And I can slow it down. Oh, I love this program. She said slow it down. Slow. Slow. Very slow. Whoops, I've slowed it down too Very much. Very slow. And so Top. It's, slow. Um, it allows me to also use a headphone, etc. So I can write my document, my notes, my thesis, whatever I'm writing, and I can uh, exit out of this document. Alert, exit, keyword. Do you want to save your document? Do I want to save it? Let's no. say N yes. for no. no button. Enter. Keyword menu. Now what's remarkable Create. about this? is in an environment where I have support uh, from sighted people, I can lift up the screen and I've got a visual display on the tablet. So I can now work with uh, sighted peers to collaborate with them. If I'm a student and I want the teacher to check my work, they can look in at the visual display to see what I've written. But I can also braille directly on this screen. By touching the screen, I can get a... Open. Access to the document, access by touching the braille only, by touching the screen, I'm sorry. And uh, that means silent typing. It means it's very easy to use and it's a touch screen. So it's really easy to use just by putting your fingers on the glass and accessing files. the document. SSP notes from the 22nd of July. Just like I would with the Docs. braille keyboard. But I can also access uh, Android applications, as I said. So I have full access to YouTube, uh, the Google Play Store, Google Docs, all of those mainstream applications as well, just through um, the provided apps or the ones that I've downloaded through a Wi-Fi connectivity. So it really allows me to be empowered as a, as a student, but also integrated in a, in a mainstream environment. Ladies and gentlemen, and Ramona Mendy, please make some noise. It's, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Um, yeah, let's get into the deep dive because we want to see the sidecore part. Uh, what, we are, what we have done in the back end, um, this may look like the, the default forms back end, but it isn't. Everything what you see in here, the, the fields and the expanders and draggables are all done by ourselves because we want to be... Um, safe from future updates. So if there will be uh, the items or the views will be over, overwritten in, in, in future updates. So we did everything by ourselves. We, we hide all the default sidecore expanders. We created our own new expanders. We copy all the fields which was necessary and created new views for that. Um, and for sure we added the new uh, fields to the, to the expanders. Um, you can see that here, this, these are the changes in the, in the, in the master DB. So, so we have all here our custom folders. Please remember this ID. This will be in the next slide uh, important where we set the data source in the core DB. Yeah, and we created our own views. And you can see that here. This is the default single line text uh, 
which is delivered from Sidecar. Um, this is ours. Uh, it's a little bit more. Um, I will take this screen, this uh, uh, image in, in, in the later sections to show what we changed in the, in the input areas or, or whatever. Then the packet changes. For sure, you have to use Sidecar Rocks. <laughs> um, I'm just showing here how to, to add our own expanders. And this is also no magic, but, but, but this is hard to find this, um, that this input tap control has this design part, and this design part has renderings. It's, it's really, really hard to find. And then there you can see we added our custom expander and draggables. And we hide the default ones, as you can see here, it's not visible. And this one is visible. Yeah, and here's, here's the ID which I mentioned, which point to the data source in the master DB. Yeah, inputs and labels are the quick wins we can have in, in a form because um, we just connect the label, in this case, the name with the input field below. Name star, my website document, main landmark, dialogue, Name star edit required blank. Dialog. Project description edit multi line blank. Dialog. Name star edit required blank. And um, this is just the connection between the label and, and the input. Back and forth. So even if I, if I click into the, the input, it will read the label, or if I click on the label, I will get the focus into my input. So this is a, a quick win. Um, now we come to, to validation. Um, are here any developers which uh, requires uh, user-friendly validation messages, me messages inside CoForms? Any? Um, it, it, it's almost like if, if uh, Sidecar says field is required and we don't want to have such messages and, and we, we um, added a field in the validation section. It's, it's a required field message. And in the backend, it looks like this one. Um, so I can enter every text here and it will be, will be displayed as, as my user-friendly validation mes message. Um, I show that. In, in a short demo. So this is the name. And at the moment it's please enter your name. I just add an edit. Just a demonstration. Then reload the page. And the validation message is, is changed. So, so we can uh, simple add a user friendly validation message now from the backend. Um, this is the default uh, validation settings helper, helper which, which gets this field here. Yeah, live regions. Um, you may notice uh, where I hit the submit button. <laughs> The focus jumps automatically in the in the first required field. So this is done by um, live regions in alert mode, and I can I can delegate uh, the screen reader and said um, if something changed within this area, in this case the uh, additions text, so there there appears a validation mes message, then I can 
direct the screen reader to, to read that area again. Um, I show that here. My dialogue, please enter your name. Name star edit required, please enter your name blank. So that would be for every required field. If I said it's a, a live region or an, an alert, um, this will be always jumping to the next uh, required field. Also complete, this is something new. Um, you may remember my friend Hans-Jürgen Minke, he has just a small hook. So uh, what we wanted to achieve, that persons like him is also able to, to fill a big form with, with one click. So um, as always, we have to do changes in the, in the master DB. <coughs> And we added um, a data source for accessibility. Um, you can follow the links. This is all uh, documented, uh, the, the HTML attribute. And there are a lot. So I, I could even fill a, a form automatically with his credit card names or dates or whatever. So you can see there's really everything. Or uh, Combined autocompletes, so I can I can make a difference if it's telephone at work or telephone uh, at home or email address at home or whatever. Again, changes in the call DB, and this is uh, a complete new section what we had. So I first will show you the expander. This is the accessibility expander, exactly. Yeah, now comes the tricky stuff, or <laughs> the work you have to do, because uh, you have to add this expander to every field. Um, we did it here to the single line text, um, but then we was clever and said, uh, we, we we just clone the item to every field where we need it. We are pointing to the to the data source in the master master DB. Yeah, and here you can see it's a clone. So we cloned it to every field where we need it. Um, this is how it looks like in the forms packet. So this is a complete new trackable uh, expander with uh, the two fields. Um, this is the same um, the settings helper where we get the field names and the field values. It's a little bit more like uh, than uh, in the validation stuff. Yeah, and this is the, the part where we update it. If, if the model has a an, an, an value in any of these autocomplete fields, it will be used. Otherwise, the, the regular uh, sidecar validation message will be displayed. So you are free. Yeah, and this is how it looks like uh, at the end. My website document, main landmark, dialogue. Email private edit has auto complete blank. Auto fill list expanded. Test at example.com one of two. Test two at example.com two of two. Test my website document. Main landmark. Dialog. Email private edit has auto complete test two at example.com test two at example.com. In this example, we just uh, use um, the email address. But you all will know it from if you're filling out a form and, and I said, okay, I want to use the, the autocomplete with my name. It will fill the, the whole address line and, 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 and city or zip code or whatever. And this is done by, by one click. Yeah, security is, is uh, 
the last topic, the final topic. Um, all capture variants uh, are challenging for everyone. You may know, uh, I, I show it, uh, recapture where you have to find all traffic lights on, 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 a, on, a, on a picture. Um, text is, 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 is hard. Um, images, that, that, that is what I'm talking about, traffic, find the traffic light. Uh, this, is not, this is not possible for, for a blind guy. Um, audio is also hard if you can't hear. An, an audio capture, capture will not be useful. Uh, or doing puzzles, um, this is also uh, complicated. Um, what we did, uh, we in, uh, decided to use Honeypot. This is a custom field we added to the Psychoforms backend. <laughs> and the idea behind this is, is really, really simple because um, it's, it's a hidden field. So, and uh, if a robot will, will uh, scan my page and fill this field, then I know it's a robot because no normal users, user will, will find this field. And that's why it's called a honeypot. And this is for accessibility really, really important because um, I don't have to, 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 to fill out uh, complex puzzles or, or whatever. Um, yeah. I'm done. Do you have any questions? Just impressed? <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about? Uh, thanks for the great demo and uh, all the innovation. Is there any package to save us having to type all that stuff in? Oh, I, I forgot that to say. Um, the inspiration of this presentation was uh, Adam Neymanovic, head of development from Sitecore. And I already had a meeting with him with the complete uh, Sitecore forms uh, team. So Adam promised me uh, all these changes we did so, so Adam has already the package and the code. <laughs> so, and he promised me uh, it will be hopefully part in the next release. Type called 10.3. Fantastic. Thanks very much.